Hi, everybody. Welcome to our last round of the age 7 to 11 STEAM kits. I'm so excited you're here today. We are going to be ma making robot arms that you can wear. So I think this will be a really fun one. There are some harder parts, uh, such as tying knots and tying knots around some pieces of straw. So if you think that will be hard for you, or if you don't know how to tie yet, maybe you can ask um, an older brother or sister or a parent or grandparent to help you. And if you don't have anybody there to help you right now, um, you can always watch this movie video at another time. Uh, we leave it posted on our YouTube channel for you to watch anytime you want. So if you need to pause this and come back at another time when someone can help you, then that is just fine. We'll be happy to have you back then too. To help us get in the robot mood today, I am going to read to you from a book called Bots, Adventures of the Super Zeros. And this is written by Russ Boltz and illustrated by Jay Cooper. And this is book number seven. You might see number seven up there in a series called Bots. So this is a book we have in our library. You might have some others in your school libraries or that you might be able to find. These are graphic novel chapter books. So if this is something you're interested in, you can request this book on our Track Pack app to read from our library or find another one, another edition somewhere else. So Bots, Adventures of the Super Zeros. Chapter one, a normal day. Hello humans, it's another normal day in Botsburg. The bird bots are chirping, grown-up bots are working, and the student bots are learning at school. Wait, it looks like some students have escaped. Uh-oh, are these student bots getting away from school? Students, please don't run. I know you are very excited about our field trip today. Phew, they are not escaping. They are getting on the school bus to go on a field trip. Time to make sure all my students are here. Head count, scan, engage. I bet a lot of your teachers might wish that they had a head, bot, head count scanner as well when you go on field trips. What are you two buckets of bolts reading, says this girl robot here. It's the latest issue of Superbot. Comic books? Ugh, comic books are boring. No, Tinny, this issue is great. See, Superbot is in trouble. Her arch enemy, Superbad Brad, has her trapped. Dun, dun, dun. And now we get a look inside of their comic book. You'll never get away with this, says Superbot. Ha ha ha, it's over, Superbot. The only way to stop the doomsday device is by pressing the button way over there, and you are way over here. What is Superbot going to do? The world would be in trouble, she says, if I didn't have super stretch arms. Zzzz, wave, zing, 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 push. Looks like I know how to push your buttons, super bad Brad. To pay snatch, annoying poke. Oh dear, super bot saves the day. And here we have Tinny and the two other robots. That, that was, was so cool. So not cool. She is not impressed. I wish we could be superheroes, but you're already super zeros to me. Aw, thanks Tinny. No, 
Wait, that wasn't a compliment. I wasn't being nice to you. They took it as a compliment though. Not many superheroes were created on field trips. Hmm, I wonder where the bots are going today. A radioactive spider petting zoo? That's how Spider-Man got his powers. Gamma rays are us? Will that make them big and strong like those guys jumping out of the roof? Or perhaps super toxic science lab? Will some super toxic science goo make them superheroes? The bot cave, like the bat cave. Magical rings and things. The supermarket. Do you become a superhero at the supermarket? Maybe. Here we are, class. The giant speaker factory. The giant speaker factory. Can you become super there? Chapter two, radioactive. Radio as in a speaker radio or radioactive. Hmm, and that is where I will leave it. So if you want to read some more of that, then feel free to borrow that book from our library. Today, we are going to get started on our steam kit. So you should have your kit that is labeled robot arm. I got the right date on it this time for May 14th, so we should be good to go. Inside your kit, you will have five straws and five pieces of string, probably tied together something like this. And you will have one sheet of construction paper of any color. You will need to supply tape. So if you have duct tape, scotch tape like this, or masking tape, any of those will do. Um, this is what we had, so that's what we're using. You'll also need a pair of scissors, a pencil or pen, optionally a glue stick, and some pieces of, of cardboard. So I have a few different options here. I have an old Kleenex box that I've broken open and I have a pop container. And you want something that you can at least cut a long thin strip out of because we're going to be using it um, to attach our robot hand to our arm to make it wearable. So those are the things that you will need to get started on our activity today. The first part of our activity is going to be tracing your hand on the construction paper. So this works more easily if you trace an adult's hand. So that's another reason to have an adult here helping you. But if you don't have an adult to help you and you still want to try it, then while you are tracing your own hand, just make sure that you draw your fingers out longer than your actual fingers. So the longer the fingers are in this activity, the easier it will be to attach all of our different parts to this hand cutout. So a child's hand is a little bit small for the activity. So if you're tracing your own hand, just make your fingers longer to make your final cutout shape larger. So I am going to trace my hand here. And then if you have already traced your hand, making your fingers a little bit larger or traced an adult's hand, then we will use our scissors to cut it out. So we can do that quickly. If you have a wrist portion on your hand, that's okay. Um, it probably would be helpful to have a little bit of space at the bottom of your hand to make it easier to attach it to our cardboard once we're ready to put both pieces together. Um, but it doesn't need to be a huge long uh, space at the bottom. As long as we have some good long fingers with lots of space to attach our straws. 
So we're going to be learning a little bit about human anatomy. That means body parts today and more specifically about the bones in our hand because our straws, we're going to cut them up and line them up on our paper hand here to be positioned somewhat like the bones in our hand are. And they are going to work to make our robot hand movable without us actually moving it with our fingers. So hopefully this works out well and we can give that a shot and become superheroes ourselves, just like the bots in our book wanted to. All right, so there is my hand. It doesn't have to be perfect. If your fingers aren't exactly straight, then that's not the end of the world. Um, we'll, we can make it work. All right, once you have cut out your hand, then you are going to take your pen or pencil and draw a line, just a dotted line from the point where your thumb connects to the rest of your hand. So this curve between your thumb and other fingers, and you'll just do a light dotted line across your palm. And that is what we are going to use to help us measure our straws to make sure they are the right length. So you'll want a dotted line if we can see this here across, just like that from the bottom point of this curve between your thumb and finger. Once you have that, you can slide your string off of your straws and use one of your straws and line it up with this dotted line on your palm. And you're going to measure to the end of each of your fingers with a different straw. So you have five straws and five fingers that you're going to use these straws to make the bones with. So I will measure from this line, the bottom of the straw is lined up on the line and I'm going to measure up to the tip of my index finger, my pointer finger. That's the one I will start with. Then I'm going to cut it off at the tip of my finger. And I can put this section that I cut off off to the side. We might, we will be using a portion of it later, but now I have the piece of straw that I'm going to use to make the bones in my finger. So first of all, I'll want three bones. So if you bend your finger, you'll see that there are three sections in your finger and those are moved with three different bones and the two joints in between. And you can count this bottom knuckle as a joint as well. There are more bones in your hand, but we're not too worried about those today. So to make our three bones in our finger, we're going to take the piece of straw that we measured and we're going to fold it in half. It doesn't have to be exact, but very close to half. So we can fold it in half and then in that middle point where it's bent, we are going to cut the straw. Okay, and then you can set one of those sections down and we'll bend this one in half again. And this one is harder. The shorter it gets, the harder it is to find the middle point. So you might have to kind of wiggle it around a few times. So there we go, I have it in half again. And I can pinch the folded ends and I will cut it, oops, cut it one more time. So that I have that in half as well. So I have two small pieces and one longer piece. All right, you can set those to the side for a minute and grab the extra piece that you had left from that straw. And you don't have to measure this one, but just cut off a chunk that will be large enough that we can tie the end of our string around it. And that will be a weight so that when our string goes through our straws, it's going to hold the string on and not just pull through the straws that are going to be the bones in our finger. 
So once you have that piece cut, you can pull your strings apart. I tried to do tie it in a way that it wouldn't be too hard to get untied. So hopefully you don't have too much trouble getting them apart. Okay, so there's my bunch of string. And here is one string. So all you need right now for one finger is one string. So just like we had five straws, one straw for each finger and your thumb. We also have five strings, one for each finger and your thumb. All right, and you can tie, this is trickier, so you might need an adult to help with this part, but you might be able to do it yourself. And I encourage you to try first. And if you do need help, then don't be afraid to ask for help. So you will tie the string around the straw so that it can work as kind of a weight or a stopper at the end of the finger, like I was saying. So I would double knot it because one knot is not likely to stay. Oh, if I can get my fingers to cooperate here. All right, so it's double knotted so it will stay on there. And even if it slides down a little bit so it's close to the end of the straw, you can just kind of slide it. So it's about in the middle, just so it's evenly weighted. Then you can hold on to the loose end of the straw. So your, sorry, of the string so that your straw is hanging at the bottom. Then you can thread your finger bone pieces of straw that we measured onto the string. So you'll want to put the two smaller pieces first and then the larger piece. So I will just thread the string through the straw and I can let it drop down so it falls against my um, stopper straw. So there's one skinny one or one short one, two short ones and a long one. Oops, that one didn't want to cooperate. There we go. My three straws are on. I'm just going to arrange my video now so that you can see my hand print on the table and I will show you the next step. Hold on one minute. Okay, so we have our hand print here. Now what we're going to do is actually attach our finger bones to our finger. So we don't have to worry about tying this one down because we just want it to hold the string and keep it from falling straight through the rest of these straws. So this guy we can pull up a little ways. Whoops. And then the shortest or the short straw, we can attach fairly close to the end of the finger. So I'm going to use my tape to do that. And I can just put a little strip on here. Because I'm using clear tape, I can put it around to the back of my handprint and it's not going to show on my final project. So if it would bother you that you could see tape, maybe just make your tape short enough that it will only show on the side that has the straws or use clear tape. So the rest of my straws are running away here. When you are attaching these, you need to leave a little bit of space in between each of these bones or straws, just like we have the joints on our fingers. There's a little space in between the actual bones that allows our hand, our paper hand and our real hands to bend. So don't tape the straws right against each other. And it doesn't matter if they go over your bottom or your middle line on your hand at this point, that's just for measuring. So we'll just leave a little bit of space in between and we will tape those two bones on as well. And I'm just going to use half of this piece of tape. There we go, get him to stay there. And you want to line up the straws fairly straight um, just so that it will help your finger bend in a straight motion but it doesn't have to be exact. 
All right, so that is the process we are going to follow for, oh, let's try your finger, there we go. Sorry, interrupt myself. So that is how our fingers are going to work. And we're going to do that same process for each of our fingers and our thumb. So I won't make you watch me do that. I'll pause my video and finish that up. And you can pause the video as well to take your time to do that or replay the steps um, by going back to the beginning of the video if you need to do that. And I'll be back once I have all of my finger joints attached. All right, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I'm back. How did you do with your robot hand? This is what mine looks like. And I forgot to tell you before I fast forwarded that when you're doing your thumb, you can use, just measure your straw the length of the thumb because your dotted line is right to the bottom of your thumb. And then you just have to cut that measured piece of straw in half once because our thumb only has two joint, two bones in it. So two sections separated by one joint. So we need two sections of straw separated by one joint. And while I was paused, I also tied loops in the end of the bottoms of my string for each finger. And we are going to put our own hands, fingers into those loops um, to make our robot hand move. So to make those loops, you will take the end of your string that is sticking out of the straws and go ahead and make a loop with that. And you'll take your little tail end and put it through the loop. It doesn't matter which way it goes through the loop as long as it goes through like we're tying a regular knot. So if you know how to tie already, this is just like tying a regular knot to start with, except instead of pulling it tight so that this whole loop disappears, we want to keep that loop. So we'll pull it to make the loop a little bit smaller and our tail a little bit longer. Oops, my tail didn't seem to go through there. All right, so we'll have the crossover and my loop is still there and I still have a little bit of this tail. So then I'm going to, and this takes a few fingers, so you might need some adult help with this one. Um, so you'll keep your loop and pinch your knot, and this is easier when it's laid down on the table and you're not holding the weight of the hand up. But you can take your little tail and cross it around the long piece of string that's attached to your hand and make another loop with it and put the little tail end of your short little tail through that loop that you've made. I can get it to cooperate here. Into, I have to lay it down so the weight of my hand isn't pulling it. So make a loop, put the little tail through. And this knot, once you have that little tail through, this we can pull tight, but we still want to keep our finger in the bigger loop, but we can pull that tight. So it's made a tight knot and there is a loop in it. So we can try our hand out with this and you might have to play with the lengths of your strings a little bit, but the idea is that your thumb will go in the loophole for your thumb on your robot hand. Your index finger or pointer finger will go in that loop. Your middle finger in that loop. Your ring finger in the next loop. And your pinky finger in the pinky finger loop. And I found um, just, if you may have found if you traced your own hand and didn't make your fingers longer, these tiny small bones or straws on your pinky finger got very tiny, even with my adult sized hand. So that is probably why it's harder to trace a child sized hand. 
So if you traced your own hand and it made these pinky finger straws too small, just try again. If you have a piece of regular paper or construction paper at home, you can try again and just make the fingers longer so that the straws will be longer. Maybe you'll have some, hopefully, some straws at home, or you could use some of your leftover pieces to make larger sections if you need to. All right, so I'm just going to hold this hand kind of in the middle here. And then when I bend my fingers, I also bend my robot hand fingers. So I'm not directly moving them with my fingers, but I am moving them with my hand. So we can shake our fingers out of those strings. If you need to adjust your loops so that your string isn't as long, you can do that. Or if you wanted to cut off some length of string and retie your stopper at the top, if that's easier than redoing the loops at the bottom, you can do that. So we can set this aside for now. And this is where we're going to need our cardboard. So we are going to attach our robot hand onto our cardboard. So the cardboard will be like our robot arm and the hand is going to be our robot hand. So that will make it so that we don't have to hold on to this hand with our other hand. We'll just have it attached to this cardboard and the cardboard can slide onto our arm, kind of like a shield with a strap. Um, and then we should be able to move it just with our fingers. So I'm going to use this pop can, uh, pop box, because it has a good length for the length of my forearm. So your forearm is the part of your arm between your wrist and your elbow. You don't really want the cardboard to reach too far up, at least not to your fingers. It could go to the back of your hand and you don't really want it past your elbow because then it makes it hard to move your arm. So this is a little bit longer than my arm. So I'm going to have to trim it down a little bit, but I'm going to start with the rectangle shape that the box has. So if you don't have a rectangular box, um, you can just cut a rectangle out of any shape box you have. So you could also use a Kleenex box that might be closer to the size of your arm. That would actually work for my arm too. So we can trim it around where all of the creases are on the box so that we're just left with this flat middle rectangular part. So I'm going to cut all of these flaps off on the end. There we go. My scissors will flop right. There we go. And you can just put the scraps off to the side, maybe use them for a project another time or later on today. And then I'm going to measure this to my arm. So like I said, this one's a little long, so I'm going to cut off some space and I'll just cut off a chunk and see if that works better. That's maybe a little bit long still. So it goes up past the end of my fingers. So I'm going to trim it just a little bit more. All right, and that's good. It reaches not quite up to my fingers and it doesn't go down past my elbow. So now this could be, if you had some longer strips left like this, I can use it to make a strap where I will slide my arm inside the uh, cardboard and strap my arm to it with this. So I'm going to use this strip that I have, again, cut it off at the creases with these extra flaps from when it was a box and make sure I have my flap strap long enough that it will be able to be taped and leave enough room for my arm to slide through. So this is actually a little bit long. There is quite a bit of space between my arm and the strap. So I'm going to trim it down a bit again. And I will try that. 
It may be easier to do this with duct tape just because it's a little stronger and will make it sturdier when you're putting your arm in and out, but I didn't have duct tape today, so I'm going to try and make it work for now with our scotch tape here. So let me just adjust this down so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to tape this strap. See, I have it kind of curved up. I don't want to tape it down like this because then I can't fit my arm in. But I'm holding it up as high as I want it to be so my arm can go in. And I'm just going to tape it to my other piece of cardboard. I'm going to use a few pieces of tape to make sure it's strong enough. And I'll do this on both sides to hold it up in its curved position. Okay, so I can give this a test run. It fits on my arm perfectly. So now I am going to, actually I maybe should have put that strap down further because I'm going to attach the robot hand onto my robot arm now. And I'm going to need enough room that I can pull down my strings on it. But I'll start with this. Again, I'll use my scotch tape to tape this hand on to the end of my arm. I have a couple pieces to make sure it's really on there, sturdy. Okay, then I'm going to slide my arm in, see if I can get my strings sorted out here and get the right fingers where they belong. And I suppose you wouldn't have to have the same fingers on, but it would be easier if you only want to move one finger at a time to know which finger you would have to pull. But maybe that could be a mental test for you. All right. So here we are. I'll hold my hand up. All right, so it seems a little floppy. You might need another piece of cardboard along the back of your hand to make sure it stays up firmly. So I'm just going to hold it right now and bend my fingers. So I do need to make a few modifications because with my strap, I need to have my hand pulled down further because my strings are too long. So you might have to make a few modifications to yours after you finish it to get it to work just right, but you have made your own movable wearable robot hand. So I can't wait to see your superhero actions with it. And I would love to see pictures that you could share with the library, or if you want to talk to me when I come and drop off books at your car for curbside pickup and tell me how this went, I would love to hear it. I had a friend do that about our uh, craft stick ninja stars, and I was happy to hear from her about that. So that is it for our STEAM Friday activity today. I hope you have tons of fun with your robots. Bye.